Today's overlook stock maybe stretches the definition. DocuSign is in our focus. George Tillis joins us, senior markets correspondent, looking at the business that is now trading near $70, George, a one-year high, a technical breakout, uh, and they're going to join the S&P mid-cap, which seems to be an endorsement of their longevity. Yeah, I think so, OJ. I mean, this is a, an interesting situation with a stock that um, if you just go back five years, I mean, it was trading at uh, close to $300. So we've seen a huge uh, decline in the last five years for DocuSign. But if you look at the last year, I mean, the stock is up close to 48 or so percent. And it's it seems to, as you mentioned also, breaking out of a, a two-year trading range above the $65 area at the very least on the weekly chart. But uh, for those who don't know, I mean, you probably recognize the the, uh, the name. Essentially, it's a premier uh, e-signature based business and documents or digital uh, documents uh, agreements company. And uh, if you just go back and look at the uh, the business uh, back in 2020 when it started hitting some of those you know all time highs, the company was generating less than a billion dollars in sales, losing about um, 100 million dollars in uh, in losses. But if you just fast forward to the last 12 months, the company's basically tripled its revenues to close to $2.9 billion. But in fact, in the last year, they generated close to $988 million in net income. So they've been completely turned around. The company is profitable. You know, net income margins are about 35%. Gross margins have been expanding for the underlying business higher than their five-year averages. And I think now this company, from a valuation standpoint, is right-sized, just considering it's trading around 17 times forward earnings. Uh, with revenue and earnings growth somewhere in the mid-single digits. Mm. George, uh, mid-single digits, not exactly huge, but better than yep. negative and also kind of surprising that they're still finding new customers or at least uh, charging you know, who they've got more. Uh, there's, yep. uh, I think, some implications of AI tech that uh, might be an ace up their sleeves. So maybe there's some speculative behavior going on again here. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, look, in the last year, the stock has performed exceptionally well. Uh, I suggest, you know, what's happened here is we've seen just a multi-year multiple compression. While at the same time, you know, you go back and look at the share count back in 2020. So let's just say four years, they've actually increased the share count by about 20 percent. And they seem to have reduced expenditures. They're cutting back workforce, implementing new technologies. They have recurring, you know, subscription revenue and total revenue and billings growth that isn't all in the mid-single digits. So what I suggest is happening here is DocuSign is becoming more in line with value versus where it was trading at four years ago, where it was, it was basically priced for growth at an unreasonable, exceptionally unreasonable price. And um, it's taken many years, um, especially if you look at the trading range that it's been in the last two years, it's now breaking out of that trading range. But it's starting to manifest into really a value company. And there may be also a, a possibility for you know a deployment of dividend or even a share buyback, considering they've got over a billion dollars in cash on the books, uh, on about twelve and a half billion dollars in market cap, and they're really just growing steadily. And um, that's what you want to look at this company as. It's not going to go back to three hundred dollars anytime soon, but it is becoming you know, effectively. It has a duopoly with Adobe's Hello Sign, and you know the the net income margin is quite reasonable and attractive. I'm not saying there'll be a union, but it's a very small company, and maybe you know at some point in time a larger player out there, perhaps a Microsoft, would be interested in this business. Again, I'm not suggesting that's going to happen. I could see certainly is that that's a possibility, though. Yeah, the um, uh, staying power of this has been pretty impressive, especially when you look at the way the trailing valuation versus the forward has shifted. The market's got a lot more reasonable view of it now because it was trading yes. it at some pretty obscene valuations 70 100 you know times plus uh for a while there like infinite when they were struggling to make profit but now the 4p is less than 20 so you know the um the expectations are very mild it seems like at this point oh definitely and that's that's the whole point of you know why i suggest this this company you know should be where it's at because of the fact that the valuations are reasonably in line now you know, if you just take the 2024 earnings per share around $3.49, uh, effectively, it's it's got a 5% earnings yield really priced in, uh, which, you know, is about three times that amount, you know, 15 to 17 times on a forward multiple basis. So it looks like it's it's fairly priced contingent upon 
that mid single digit revenue, which is around 7% in earnings growth at around six. So uh, it's not going to move, like I said, back to the levels where it was. I mean, even after a buyout, if that's possible, or even comes to the table um, as a possibility. But, you know, it's really, uh, you know, a value and steady grower now versus the parabolic mover and expectations that were really unreasonable going back just a few years back. Okay. Yeah, what a uh, shift here. I mean, the chart doesn't look wonderful in the long term, but in the short term, it looks pretty good. Got to say. Yep. Um, exactly. Somewhat surprised. All right. Uh, thanks, George. Appreciate that. Uh, fresh update for a beaten down post-COVID trade. Now moving on to a brighter horizons.